Well, have you ever, guys, just saying, went, what in the world have I just read? After, like, reading a book. Because if you had that feeling, you'll probably get that feeling for this book. Hello, fellow bookquesters. It is I, Aaron, the bookquester. Today, I have this confusing but still very scientific book. Nine Fox Gambit by Yoon Ha Lee herself. And it is the first book of the Machineries of the Empire. Well, first of all, just saying Yoon Ha Lee is a female individual. She's a woman and very, very respected author. She's a Korean and it's a she, not a he. Many people just confuse that up. Just here to clear that up. Search it up on Google, it will show you all sorts of girl, I mean female individual photos of Yoon Ha Lee. So search it up if you want to, to clear it up. And if we continue on, get into the plot. First of all, Nine Fox. A Nine Fox is something from Korean folklore, for Yoon Ha Lee is actually a Korean. A Nine Fox is... A dangerous malevolent creature, usually in the myth, and it ha it is a fox that has lived a hundred years and has acquired the ability to shapeshift and do all sorts of weirdo magic. And it is a fox with nine tails. At least that's what the Korean myth is. But I already you know Lee, there's no magic in this book. It's more science of great property cannot be distinguishable from magic as many people say or something like that and if we go inside this book Cheris she is the captain of Kel Command uh, some sort of intergalactic force the military of the Herod of the Hexertrade was some sort of galactic Galactic Empire sounds familiar, you know, Star Wars, I know. I know, I know, but I'm not here to criticize this book. Or maybe I am, I'm not that sure. Well, you'll find out. And if we go on, our dear Cheris, Kel Cheris, is a soldier, a captain, actually, with her little team. And she makes a little bit of a mistake in a fight, and Kel Command doesn't like that. And she's asked to take... The, a fortress, a fortress called the Fortress of Scattered Needles, back. And she thinks her best bet is General Jadao, the Emulation Fox. Mass murderer, mass creator, arch enemy of the Hexer trade, who is kept like a pet lion or a dragon. A thing that is very powerful, very good to have you on your side, but yet is still dangerous and would be killed. In, in an instant, if something goes wrong. And by the way, Kel. It really reminded me of the Kree, you know, Captain Marvel, in the Marvel Studios, MCU. Well, it really reminded me of it, because even in that movie, the, the Kree, the Kree Empire, they're not the good people, they're actually the bad guys. And in this book, too, Kel, the Kel is not necessarily good, as Cheris finds out. Cheris is sent to retake the Fortress of Scattered Needle with the immortal soul, the ghost of General Shuo Shidao, embedded into her shadow and voicing, saying something in her head. And this is where it gets confusing. There's some sort of calendar or some sort of calendrical, something like a religion, I guess, that all the people, all the people of the empire has to believe in for the hexer trade, basically the government, to have power. I don't really understand this concept. It's like magic, but it's like, it's incredible science that it's undisquenched, it's undisquenchable, undis what is wrong with me anyway. It's like, you can't tell apart, tell apart from magic. And it's really, it really confused me for a long time. And even calendrical rot, I thought that was some sort of weapon, uh, so, some sort of, like, um, psychological weapon, or some sort of, like, acid or virus. I thought some kind of, that kind of thing. But calendrical rot, apparently, is some sort of 
dimension-ripping disease kind of thing that rips through reality. And the heretics are bringing that, and they're rebelling against the Kel and the Hexatrade entire. Personally, this book was really confusing for me, and I think this is one of those books that's first time you read it, oh my gosh, what I have, what I have just read, I have no idea what all of this says. That's, that's, it's the kind of book where at first it's like sucks and there's all blood and gore and you only see the bad parts of the book, but if you read it again, a couple times, maybe two or three times, you would find out what's the real plot and what's the real point of the book. And I'm planning on doing just that. I'll read this book again, and I will probably do a part two or a second version of this review. Anyway, that is pretty much it. Cheris, Captain Kel Cheris, trying to take back the fortress of Scattered Needles, finding out that Shu's Jadel wasn't didn't go mad and kill half of his army, and she did she did it on purpose for all for his little bit of a gay. And it is very complicated, and it blew my mind how smart Xiu Jedi was, and continuing to Yun Hao Li, because I don't have that kind of creativity to create that sort of complex plot, the betrayals, the little game that Xiu Jedi, the Emulation Fox, the cunning character, plays, and it's very confusing, and I think it's one of those things. One of those things where the author, the author understands its world, its complexity, but the readers don't understand it unless, you know, the author's next to him on breaking it down. Because that happens to me all the time. I get ideas and I got plot for my own books, or at least book ideas, and I explain to that, explain that or read that to my parents and they don't understand a word. They just say, mm-hmm, or they just not. Well, well, unless, and I explain it to them, and finally they understand, and sometimes, I guess, even enjoy it. But, you know, Lee isn't next to me explaining this book, so I guess the next best thing is to read this book a couple times and review it to you guys so you won't be as confused. And, like always, your bookquester, Aaron the bookquester, it's okay to get confused on books sometimes, but bookquester is always there to break it down.